All right, I'm on location at the Rock and Shock Convention out of Worcester, Massachusetts. I'm here with the star of Gremlins, the one and the only Zach Galligan. Hey, everybody. Now, Zach, what was it like being a young actor in Hollywood, being part of a Steven Spielberg production, being directed by Joe Dante and co-starring with Phoebe Cates? Well, it was an incredibly surreal experience. I mean, I'm literally still sort of trying to process it even now because you, you know that it happened and you know that it's real. But it, the whole thing has kind of like a dreamlike quality to it. And now that Gremlins has sort of gone on to become like a kind of American classic a Christmas movie, like iconic kind of thing like that, it, it is very, very strange. I was in Las Vegas earlier this year. Actually, it was in August. And I walked into the, one of the casinos where, you know, I was staying in every, basically every hotel in Vegas is, has a casino in it. So I was walking through the casino to get out to the parking lot, and I saw three different slot machines. Lord of the Rings, Wizard of Oz, and Gremlins. And I thought, the fa and they had my picture all over Gremlins, the Gremlins slot machine. I thought, the fact that I am in that group of movies is so mind-boggling to me. It's just, it's just amazing how the film has somehow entrenched itself in... in popular culture, not only in America, but also in other parts of the world, in, in Britain and in Australia and Japan. It's, it's just staggering. If you had told me at the time that that's what was going to happen, I would have told you I thought it was going to be like a hit, but I didn't think it would have the staying power uh, that it's had to this day. Now, was it difficult acting with an animatronic puppet? Yeah, it was pretty challenging. I mean, you got to realize you, I had wires going through my sleeve and all the way down my body and, and down my leg. And they would cut a hole in my sock and they'd go across the room and 13 different people with joysticks controlling each little individual part of Gizmo. Like it, one person did his ears, one person did his nose, one person did his smile. I mean, it, it was insane. So it was very difficult having to concentrate on what I was supposed to do and ignore the fact that various parts of my body were being pinched by wires every single time that Gizmo's face was supposed to move. Now, is that one of the reasons why the sequel is five years later so you could heal up? <laughs> That's part of it. The real reason was they wrote about three or four different versions of the script and they couldn't decide which one they wanted to do for, for Gremlins 2. Like, the, the contender for a long time was Gremlins in Vegas, but that one was deemed to be really funny and great but too expensive. So finally they made it they had to scale it down so they could do it without gremlins being all over a city. So that's why they came up with the idea of them all being in like a tower in Manhattan. So they could, it could be in a city, but it could be contained and you could have the threat of them breaking out of the containment. And of course, the bat gremlin does, in fact, break out. But luckily, Mr. Futterman is there and believes in gremlins and is there to, to destroy it. So we had some budgetary constraints we had to work with. Otherwise, we would have done, you know, uh, gremlins in London or Gremlins in Tokyo, or something like that. But, you know, that you, we eventually got the budget projections, uh, we meaning everyone involved with the Gremlins too, and, like, some of the budget project projections were, like, $200 million for a 1989 movie, and nobody, you'd never make a profit on that. So the studio was just like, we, it's, it's an amazing idea, but we can't do it. Now, with CGI, now we could probably do it and make it affordable. And since Gremlins 3 is going to be written right now and it's going to come out, I guess we'll see what they do. Are you, are you anything involved in Gremlins 3? I wish I knew. They haven't even finished the script yet. They're not even at that juncture, and I guess we'll just have to be patient and find out. Because you can't have a Gremlins movie, ladies and gentlemen, without Billy Peltz's Zach Galligan. From your lips to God's ears. Well, I'm, I'm really tight with God, so maybe he'll listen to it. I want to thank you for taking time out for this. And uh, Gremlins and Gremlins 2 and Waxworks are some of my favorite movies of all time. And let me just say one thing for people listening. Uh, the Waxwork Blu-rays, Waxwork 1 and Waxwork 2, coming out uh, October 18th. So if this airs after that date, you can go on Amazon or go into any video store and get the Blu-rays. Amazing transfer. Looks five times better than any copy of it you've ever seen before. And um, some great commentaries done by the director, Tony Hickox, and myself. So it's really an excellent deal, and I think uh, Waxwork fans are really going to enjoy it. Unbelievable. My final question is, did you ever keep anything from the Gremlins set? They wouldn't let me keep anything from the Gremlins set. Otherwise, I would have, but each gizmo or Gremlin was somewhere in the area of about forty-five to $50,000 in 1983 money. So that's kind of like doing a Fast and Furious movie and saying, hey, can I keep that car? And they're like, uh, no. 
You can't. The one and the only Zach Gallagher. Thank you very much, Zach. My pleasure.